Hi there, this is Sean. It's June, that means it's Pride Month, and during June I'll be reading books to celebrate everything LGBTQI+. In this video we're discussing Something Fabulous by Alexis Hall. This is an amazing book. It's just a fabulous farce. It's just madcap really. The whole thing's a bit mad. The characters are a bit mad. The scenes are a bit mad. Everything about it is just a bit mad to be honest. But it's so much fun. It's a barrel of laughs at times. The dialogue is just so witty. Even though the scenes are outrageous, they just all flow so well and the characters just make it seem a bit more lifelike than it really is. I do encourage people to read this if they're game. There are a few things that may put some people off. I mean, there are some explicit scenes, quite explicit and detailed. So it's not everybody's cup of tea. It's just a, a very fun, outrageous and hilarious book. Let's dive into talking about the plot now. Valentine Layton, who's the Duke of Malvern, thinks he's got a duty to marry Bella. The reason he thinks he has to marry Bella is that when they were young, both their fathers agreed that a marriage would happen. It would bring the two houses together, make them stronger. They've grown up now. Valentine's 28. Their fathers are dead. There's no real reason for them to get married, except he thinks he's got a duty still. He thinks if he doesn't, it will disrespect his father's wishes and his mother will be angry at him as well. Bella doesn't want to marry him, so much so that when he proposes, she says no, they argue a bit, he gets angry, insults her, or she thinks he insults her, and then she runs off in the middle of the night with her best friend Peggy. From then on, it just starts this whole mad thing. So that's not mad enough, Bella running off in the middle of the night. Bella's twin brother, Bonnie, arrives very early in the morning, wakes up Valentine, accuses him of being all these awful things, of chasing off Bella. He's the reason Bella's run off in a huff. He's awful, blah, 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 continues on. And then he convinces Valentine that they have to go rescue Bella. That Bella's going to head off and escape to America. She got, hasn't got a penny to her name. How's she going to survive? So off they head, chasing Bella and Bella's friend Peggy, trying to save them both from going to America penniless. We just have a whole lot of madcap scenes happen from then. And everywhere they go, everybody accuses Valentine of being rude, aggressive, um, of being anything horrible. Bonnie is always charming to people. You know, the light of the party. You know, Valentine is always the one that gets people offside. It happens every time they stop somewhere in this book. Everyone they meet doesn't like Valentine, but likes Bonnie. Early on in this book, we find that Bonnie's gay. I mean, he doesn't hide the fact, he's very proud of it, which is great. Early on as well, we see that he's got the hots for Valentine. Just his actions and his dialogue. He always calls Valentine flower. They brush against each other quite a lot. Um, when he saves Valentine from a rogue bee, Valentine starts to wonder about his own feelings towards Bonnie. Every time that Bonnie touches him, or they're very close, any touch they have, Valentine starts to feel that it's an exciting touch and he's wondering of his own thoughts and feelings towards Bonnie. This all comes to a head when they stop in an inn. When they stop there, they're trying to find some information on Bella. Has she been there? Where did she go? Which direction? Someone seems to think they have some information, but they want money, they want payment. And that payment ends up being Bonnie telling them, let's go up to the hayloft and spend some time together so you know what that means. Valentine starts to get worried about Bonnie while well, he's thinking he's worried about Bonnie, but in fact he's jealous. And this is where his feelings for Bonnie, you know, come to the surface. And when he goes to find Bonnie, he finds Bonnie in a very compromising position and he yells out and puts a stop to it. And from then on, we know that Valentine has feelings for Bonnie and he admits it. That starts their romance and their relationship with each other. And that carries on from then all through the book. They're both very in love with each other and it's very positive but all through this book also Valentine is struggling with the fact that he still thinks he needs to marry Bella even though he wants to be with Bonnie he still thinks he has to marry Bella save their family and he can have Bonnie on the side 
Bonnie doesn't want that. Bonnie's like, if you want me, it's me alone, nobody else. That's a conflict as well in this book. And that carries on through the story as well. So the book becomes, even though it's fun and very vibrant characters and it's a bit like the book as well, we've got those issues as well going on where someone's struggling with who they want to be and who they want to be with and what that means to each of these people in the story. So there's a bit of complexity in the book as well. And in the plot, I'll just mention one character that makes quite a big impression, Sir Hawley. He's also a gay character and he's not shy about it. I mean, we see him in different scenes with different people. In one scene, we see him with a blacksmith. Then we see him with somebody else. He mentions that he's with an ostler at one stage. Um, he mentions all these different people and even a priest. But he shows up in many scenes in the book. And sometimes he shows up in scenes where it just embarrasses Valentine a bit. And, he's, and the dialogue between Valentine and Sir Hawley is so good in each of these scenes. It's um, very witty. It's very funny. I just wish that we had more of Sir Hawley in the book. You know, I wish that he was there from the very start. He appears about halfway through and then he's in different scenes all the way through. He's such a good character. And I think he's a very positive character for Valentine because he seems to give Valentine that courage to be who he is. It's okay to be somebody that he thought he didn't want to be and thought it, he couldn't be. So he, he's, as he comes to terms with himself, Valentine sees something positive in Sir Hawley as well. He sees that somebody of their station can live the life that they want to lead and not be disgraced socially. So that's a very good message, even though we're talking about you know lords and, and earls and all that sort of thing. You can still relate to it in everyday life. So people who read this may get that message and realize it's okay to be who you are. And of course, with the love story element, I'm not going to tell you what happens at the end, but it is a romance as well. So, and the whole question is, will Valentine end up with Bonnie or will he marry Bella? That's the overall question of the whole plot. I felt really sorry for Valentine in this book. He's trying to do the right thing all the time, but everybody accuses him of being wrong and bad. Doesn't matter what he does, Everybody seems to think he is just wrong all the time. He just wants to help Bella. So at the start, he just wanted to help Bella by marrying her, you know, to secure her family safety and her family house. But apparently that was bad. As his character grows and he realizes that maybe he doesn't want to do that anymore, maybe he wants happiness in another direction, he has that struggle, an internal struggle, so he can feel for him. And as he's struggling with that, you want the best for him. He's a very easy character to empathize with and and to kind of get your hopes up really with him and you want the best for him and you want to see him happy by the end at least i did so i think valentine is a very special character and he's probably the best character in this book bonnie is just a bit mad really not mad as in you know he has problems but just a bit of a mad character he's so lively he's so frantic everything is so frantic with him He's always on the go, always moving, always talking. I think you'd be exhausted if you knew Bonnie in real life. That's my feeling anyway. He's very over the top. I think too over the top, even though it suits the book. He's just too much all the time. And in that way, I don't think he feels as real as Valentine does. So Valentine for me is still the best character in this book. Bonnie is still very vibrant. Every scene with him in is fun. Um, you feel his energy. Everything's so colourful. Um, he's a great positive character as well. You know, be who you are. Don't care what anybody else thinks. Be who you are. As long as it's not hurting anybody else. As long as you're just trying to be happy and you're not hurting other people, it's okay to be you. That's the whole thing about Bonnie and that's what he brings to the book. So I think in that way he's special. Even though he's over the top and outrageous, he's still special in that he gives that message. Bella is the maddest character out of all the mad characters in this book. And believe me, the book is full of mad characters. Just the whole concept of somebody running away because they've been proposed to, and then running away again and again. It happens a few times. Just that whole concept is a bit stupid, but it suits the book. 
because the whole book is based on these ridiculous scenes and events. I mean, it's a farce. It's not meant to be taken seriously. It's a book that you want to read just to be entertained. The characters are entertaining. They're all mad, but Bella... I think Bella's the least likable character in this book. I really didn't like her, to be honest. I think she was written as being too crazy, too unpredictable, um, too insensitive, and a bit mean, really. And I think that maybe the author could have just eased off a bit on this character to make it a bit more likable. So Bella, for me, was a miss in this book. Something Fabulous by Alexis Hall is just insane. It's a mad book with crazy storylines, crazy characters, over-the-top outrageous, but it's fun. It's simple, pure fun. I rate this a 5 out of 5 just because it was so shocking to me what's in this book. I didn't expect it. So many things in this book happened that were just like big moments and, and wow moments and just the whole levity of some of the scenes and how much fun the characters were and how much fun you have reading about most of the characters, not all, but most of them, that surprised me. And also the fact that it's uh, mainly, even though it's a over-the-top kind of outrageous farce, it's also a love story in a way, romance. And that seems to be the main focus of the book is that romance element. And those type of books don't usually work for me. I don't really read romance per se, but I thought this was okay. And I think it was because how fun and outrageous it was. I do review books from all different genres on my channel. Check out my channel and subscribe. I'm sure you'll find something there that you like.